Welcome back, everybody, to the Home Inspection Whisperer Show. Today, I have Clayton Estrams. He has been working with us, what, six or seven years? I don't know. They well, kind of uh, Technically seven. So, Because you were in Dallas. Because I was in Dallas. Yes, you're in the Met da your dad. Your dad was awesome. So I'm like, uh, you know, Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So talk and, to this guy when I moved down to Houston. Yeah, and moved down to Houston. You, you liked the product, how it was exactly the same. And then yeah. you... Just and then we ended up building a relationship also because you're a prior Marine, former Marine. God, oh, man, prior, Jesus. you're in the Marine Corps too. You know this. <laughs> I know, man. This devil dog is going to tear you up. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, former Marine as well. And, uh, you know, we just kind of hit it off. And this, I know I brought this up with one of my other friends on the podcast, but it, it's funny. We're so busy all the time. We only see each other like once or twice a year, but we still like, we're, we still consider each other friends. Well, we talk to we still talk to each other all the time. I mean, right. that's why social media is a great thing, right? Because right. we still I see everything's going on. I see your son growing up. Still, call, we call each other. Hey, how you doing, boo boo? Yeah. All right, great. See you. See you next time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, former Marine, and then oh, he, you're also a top producing agent too within our company, but probably within your office too as well. And yeah. so, how many homes do you think you've sold or uh, per? Yeah, sold or how does that go? Yes. So if we're talking since I've been in the business, we're looking at over 160 deals. I okay. think it's actually over 180. Um, but I know last year, uh, 2020, we're at 45 transactions. You missed our goal by three, though. For 45, that that's that's pretty busy. What is that? Like three, four, four a month ish. Hey. Yeah. But we're built for so much more. That's right. the crazy thing is is even with closing that many, because we have our systems built, I have amazing assistants. They're great at their job. Um, we could actually easily double that without changing anything and still giving amazing service. Oh, nice. So do you think uh, COVID slowed you down or you think it was just you're developing new systems and processes to like grow your no, business? No, COVID, COVID was interesting. Um, COVID made it really interesting because instead of, okay, Clayton, we can't look at houses until you know, after work, they're like, Hey, my internet's going to be out tomorrow. Let's go look at houses. I'm like, what, how do you know it's going to happen? They're like, Clayton, I already told, uh, I'm going to tell my work tomorrow morning, internet's out. We're going to go look at homes. So we're <laughs> actually able to close more deals last year really easily just because people were more flexible on their schedule. Therefore we didn't have to, you, you know, we didn't have a one and a half hour time span after work, after their work to be able to look at homes. So we got them under contract quicker. We moved quicker. Um, it was actually a lot easier because of that aspect. I never even really thought about that point of view. Uh, you know, I know we had like a two week dip and then it like blew up mm -hmm. in the Houston market, but I didn't think about it as time availability. I just thought people were stuck in their homes. They didn't like their home, you know, and then they needed a bigger home because they were working out of their home. And, but the time is everything, mm -hmm. right? You got to think about it from that point of view. Yeah. Time. Like, yeah. I, you know, and I think we're going to, we're going to see that come into play this year. Those that were stuck at home and really didn't like where they were living and they they maybe need two offices. Maybe they need a bigger office for whatever job they have. So I think we'll see more of that concept happen in 2021 than we did last year. So, last year, they're just kind of stuck in place trying to figure out what's going to happen. Right. So the people that kept their jobs or the people. OK, so we had like a you're predicting an even bigger year this year. Yes, think? I, I think we'll have at least 7% more transactions in 2021 than 2020. That's, um, man, I love Houston. We, we creep up to 10, but I think that's gonna be nationwide. Okay. I think Houston might actually see more because we have so much movement from other other states into Houston or Texas in general. Nice. So it's gonna be bigger. So before we get into the serious stuff, because I got some pretty intense questions for Which you. Which we haven't talked about, by the way. No. So we're not going over these questions. You're gonna blindside me. <laughs> I am gonna blindside you because I gotta say it. it's a very controversial questions when it comes to like, because home inspectors are so proud, you know, and, and agents mm. are too. Yeah. And then we butt heads sometimes. And you and I don't really, you know, you and I are yeah. eye to eye with most things, but like it happens out there in the field, mm -hmm. right? So um, I got some questions, but you brought in, you know, I'm a beer drinker and yes, I, I don't have any inspections today, so it's okay to it's do, okay. do afternoon okay. beer. Afternoon Day, beer. So day's done, except for this. So you brought me in Buffalo Bayou Sam's Daily here. Well, mm -hmm. What uh, what'd you bring in? What's so the other one? The other one I brought in is No Label uh, Ridgeback. So I've never had these two. I love local breweries. I like going to stop at them. In fact, on Saturday, if you're not busy, we're going to uh, Back Pew to drink a bunch of beer. So I've got a bunch of clients and friends and and people just come to hang out or drink some beer, even though it's going to rain, we're still going to have fun. Are they going to be doing the Conor McGregor fight there? 
Um, probably not. Oh, but you get to watch the little toddlers fight each other. It's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> Sometimes it lasts longer than the UFC fights. The same thing. <laughs> He does kind of have a toddler mouth in a way. He taunts yeah, I got you. A four. Yeah, but yeah. He, he goes to town. We put some. We may or may not put money down. You know, <laughs> that's pretty funny. All right, nice. So I'm gonna give this a, this one a taste. This is this. Yours is a dark beer, though. Well, I'm rocking Buffalo Bayou right now too. So we kind of mm. drink the same thing. So if he doesn't keep up, we could kind of push that down real quick. Yeah, I, that that is good. I like that. That's mm-hmm. a that's a good. I'd say this is a good lake beer. It's light. Mm. Has a nice golden color to it. You're not going to get too full, I don't think. Mm. No, that's good. Yeah, I, I dig it. It's a good ale. All right. So here we go. So forgive me for this one. This one's going to be a little bit long to well, get to the go. point. But um, <laughs> so I think the biggest problem between agents and home inspectors are a lack of communication between the client. Not so much between you and mm-hmm. I, but between the client. And so... Each client has their own story, right? So some people are from, you know, the sticks, some people are from the city, uh, whatever. Every client has different needs, right? Mm -hmm. So you see the client in a completely different light than I see the client because you've been maybe working with them for months or even years, Mm -hmm. right? I've met them for a total of, what would you say? Maybe four hours tops. But- that including the whole inspection, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, so four, <laughs> four hours. So that being said, you know, you've gotten to know the client on a personal level, you know, what schools mm-hmm. they want to go to the area, the type of house, you know, you know, their kids names and birthdays, you know, you know, the, the exact house that's going to fit their needs, how many rooms they need. And in that location, which is practically impossible in this market, mm-hmm. right? This is a seller's market. I think I've been looking at trying to move to the lake and there's like literally on the lake, there's six houses for sale. There's like 1.1 months of inventory in Houston. Yeah. Like it's, I've never seen it so low and I hope we never see this again. I hope it disappears because it's great for sellers, but good luck if you got to go buy a house afterwards. Yeah. So, you, you know, so by the time they get to this house, they've looked at, you know, probably a lot mm-hmm. because, and it's tight. And then the inspector meets the client and then most of the time from my, you know, with me coaching inspectors, they just go straight into finding everything wrong. Mm -hmm. The client shows up and they're like, Hey, I'm working, you know, and I'm just going around and finding everything wrong. And where I think that inspectors can help bridge this gap is just take a minute, no matter that we train this in our company, Uh you've probably seen this all the time, no matter where you're at in the home inspection, stop what you're doing Go and meet the client and figure out what their needs are. So with that being said, like you open up this communication, you figure out, are they a first time home buyer? Are they an engineer? Do they want to, are they multiple home and owners? Mm-hmm. Are they investors? Do the, what location are they looking at buying? Is this an okay mm-hmm. location? Is this the only place where they want to live? You right. know, so each one of those scenarios opens you up with like, a different conversation you're going to have mm-hmm. at the end of the home inspection. You, you have a solid point there. Um, I, I think some of those necessarily don't matter. Is this the only subdivision? How would that change your aspect of the job? Now, a question like, hey, how many homes, homes have you owned in your life? That could change how you talk to them about what the issues are. First time home buyer is going to freak out about anything in your inspection reports. Caulking around the windows that cost you, what, $3 for a tube of caulk and a little YouTube video? That's nothing. That takes nothing to learn. And really, homeowners need to learn that for home maintenance purposes over the years. Um, so asking those questions is going to be really important, but that's how you communicate the the inspection report to those buyers. Well, the subdivision is actually really important for us, too. Uh, this actually is something I've been trying to train within our company, too, as well. But also you bring to light to other home inspectors. The home that we're inspecting right in this location, you know, say it has an FPE panel box. Mm hmm. The whole neighborhood probably has FPE panel boxes. Yeah. So they're like, no, we want to live in this neighborhood. And be like, hey, this home has an FPE panel box. Yes, you want to replace it. But if you're looking to live in this neighborhood, all the homes have an FPE panel box. Right. And so that's where that comes into play, like the, yeah, the that neighborhood. Def- that definitely could, um, yeah. without a doubt. So I can't see your point there. So, you know, my main thing is, is like, I'm opening up the conversation to you. How do you think like inspectors and agents mm-hmm. and can help better get along to 
better inform this client, you know, the client in a way and bridge this gap of communication. Right. So I, I think it lies on both sides. It's not just the inspector. It's also the real estate professional. Right. So and it, it's like you getting into video. Um, I know I probably wasn't the reason you got into video and, and teaching people, but I pushed it because I said there's a massive lack in the real estate industry for agents to understand what's going on like really how inspections work because we know the average agent US wide only closes four deals a year. That's not that many, which right. runs at a whole different aspect. So they may not see inspections very often. So they see some inspectors as the big bad guy. Like you're just coming in to destroy this deal. And I work for years with these people and how dare you, um, you know, and one, I think the inspectors need to know how to talk to the clients and that's what y'all do a really good job at as Hey, this has a ton of issues, you know, not issues, but this has a ton of things I've written up. Some of these are big issues. Some of these are little issues. Let's go over them and really breaking it down, saying caulking around a window that needs to be done ASAP, but it's not something you should lose the house over. Um, so I think that's a big key point of it is just making sure you're really communicating properly and what's important to those buyers. Um, you really press, you know, what are the big objects? Right. What's going to cost you the most? So, and that all leads to the very beginning. You know, you meet them, mm -hmm. you figure out who they are, and then you finish your home inspection. And at the end, whenever you're reviewing the mm -hmm. report or going over your findings, you discuss what I always like to see, you, the the big three, you mm -hmm. know, like what are the big three items, which it's, right. what is it? Always roof and HVAC, you know? <laughs> roof, HVAC, hot water heaters probably going to be there if you don't have any foundation issues. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think, I think it's a lack on both sides. It's the agent side and it's the inspector side. If the inspector knows how to actually talk to the clients and talk to the agents, that alleviates a lot of issues right there. Right. Um, if the agent's able to step in educated, and that's why I think, you know, anybody in our industry, doesn't matter what you do, you should jump on video, teach teach people how things work, um, but jump in there and and teach those agents, hey, this is how the inspectors work. We're here for the buyers. We don't work for the agents. You work right. for the buyers. Yep. They hired you to do a service, do the service, find everything you can. You might miss some things here and there. It's going to happen. We're all human, but find everything you can. Just explain it properly to the buyers, especially first time home buyers. Explain it to them properly. They're not going to be scared off. Right. Yeah. And it's so funny. It's how do you explain it properly to the buyers? You know, that that's one of the biggest things mm -hmm. because sometimes whenever we're going over it, some of these buy, buyers, they'll will say there's no GFCIs. I, I kind of know the answer to this question. Mm -hmm. I'm just open you up so we can just talk about yeah. it. But you know, there's no GFCIs in the kitchen. It's a 1960s home. And we and we explain to them, they're like, well, why do you need a GFCI? What is a GFCI? I'd be like, well, you know, if a blender falls into a sink. It mm -hmm. prevents, you know, electrical shock and possible fire. And then, right. and they're like fire shock, you know, <laughs> and then so we're all going to die. House is going to burn down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you have to like bring it back a little bit and be like, well, a GFCI is, you know, 15 to $25 and you find it, whatever's mm -hmm. upstream and you talk to them a little bit about it. It's just funny as society progresses, I've noticed that more and more people are mm -hmm. not as informed about homes, you know, our grandpas could probably build a house ground up. Oh yeah. No problem. Poor foundation, do mm -hmm. everything, you know, fix plumbing lines. It would know. be better than new builds today in a lot of cases. <laughs> right. Yeah. But a lot of people don't even know how to replace an outlet anymore. Right. So, so you have to bring it back and understand you have to like communicate to mm -hmm. everybody from start to finish of like what this problem actually means. Mm -hmm. So the question is like how to explain it. Right. Right. Um, you know, I think really knowing your stuff and being able to read the buyers, you know, body language is everything, you know, you're, you're in a sales position, but you're not in a sales position. It's real weird. It's how I feel about real estate. I'm a salesperson, but I'm not a salesperson. Um, so it's really going in and reading their body language when you see them get wide eyed and you know, it's not a big issue. It's something that's easily done. Um, you could say, Hey, look, let me do a quick search on Google. Here it is. This is how you put in a GFCI. It is something that's easy enough to do yourself. In fact, they even, my dad would kill me to say this, but they even <laughs> have GFCIs. He was an electrician, um, gen, general electrician, right? General? Yeah, uh, yeah licensed electrician. Licensed electrician. Yeah. So they, they even make GFCIs now where you just kind of strip the edge of the wire and you just shove it in. Yeah. You don't even have to twist and put screws in. Like It's super easy. So being able to pull up a video like that and say, hey, look, this is what I'm talking about doing like this YouTube video that I literally just searched. 
So it wasn't something that, you know, I had pre-prepared to make it look like it was simple to make the agent happy. Um, so simple things like that. I know, you know, one big thing we always see is roof flashing. And y'all have always been, even up in Dallas, your dad's, you know, guys were really good at saying, hey, it needs roof flashing. It seems like a big thing. It's kind of a big deal if it's not there over the long, you know, long haul of the home. But look, you get some tin scissors, you get a piece of tin. Here's how you cut it out and you could put it up really easily. Yeah. So even if they didn't want to accomplish the task, they understand hiring someone isn't going to be a ridiculous task. It's not going right. to make or break the home falling down or not. Right. And and in some of those cases are, hey, it's a handyman. Handyman is going to be cheaper than a licensed electrician or a licensed plumber. Just make sure you hire one of those true professionals for electrical work, you know, plumbing work, things like that. But, but flashing. My favorite thing to use is always time, you know, perspective of time. Mm -hmm. You know, someone would be like, oh, my gosh, you know, the windows fogged or, you know, you know, the panel box is a, a challenger panel yeah. box or something. I'd be like, well, this panel box has been in there longer than I've been alive. So, you know, you got to really bring it. Up. Yes, it d should be replaced, but you got to think it's been performing for mm -hmm. 34 years. Right. You know, so you want to start budgeting as soon as you get in to start understanding you do need to upgrade these items. But, you know, right now I don't see any burnt wires. There's no mm -hmm. rust in there. You know, it's an older panel box. Yes. You know, start working that way. Right. But like you said, it, what is this like a $400,000 deal? Mm -hmm. Panel box is 1500 bucks. Well, and, and then yeah. that's also when the agent steps in and, you know, y'all say, y'all typically say, hey, look, in this area, this, you know, in this subdivision, this is the stuff you're going to deal with. At this year built is typically, I think what y'all say, year built is pretty typical across Houston, doesn't matter what area, right? Um, and the real estate professional looks at it and says, hey, look, this is the area you want to be in. This is what we're going to get time and time again. So I know when I was up in Dallas, there was certain areas of town that there was foundation issues. Like didn't matter which house. Like they all had them. On one side of the street, they all have foundation issues. And if they haven't had it fixed yet, it's just going to happen whenever the next person buys or sells or whatever happens. Um, but it's going to happen. That's how this area works. So yeah. it's the same concept. Yeah, same concept. And yeah, so it's it's just about our bringing the perspective. So this is actually a good one. I actually didn't have this one written down, but whenever the home is actually bad, mm -hmm. you know, in one of actually the, the previous podcast that I was just doing, Clayton said, um, not this Clayton, the other Clayton, the home inspector Clayton. The one that doesn't look as good. <laughs> he, uh, he said, um, you know, when the inspector flinches, you should flinch, mm -hmm. you know? So like, you got to think I've seen thousands of homes, but if I walk into a wall and I'm like, that's full of termites. You mm -hmm. know, that's when you should be like, okay, whenever the inspector actually thinks this is bad, you should maybe listen to him. Well, and that know? also goes back to your beginning questions too, because what you see is bad may not be bad for them. Right. So it, like electrical work, if you said, Clayton, this whole house needs to be rewired into one story, I would look at it and I'd probably go up in the attic and look at it and go, not a big deal. I don't care. Like that may not be something I'll probably go negotiate in the contract to try to get the price down, get extra money to kind of, you know, save some costs. But I'm not worried about electrical. I could do all of that, you know, myself or I know somebody could do it really quickly um, for a good price. So to me, that's not scary. But other people terrifying. Right. Mm -hmm. All the way back to learning your client, learning your clients, knowing yeah. what they're looking for. Yeah. Learn the client, learn their tolerances. And then talk about the items if the item shows up that they're actually stressed about. And, you know, there's and been maybe it's even learn your agent, learn that buyer's agent. And what how experienced are they? Are they because that again, you don't work for that agent, right? You work for that client. So it's almost like when you when you walk into an inspection, you should be like, OK, this is the agent. It doesn't matter how you feel about them, but that agent may not guide this person properly when it comes to inspections to repairs. So let me as the inspector guide them properly. Um, is really how I would look at it if I was an inspector, you know? Yeah. So, you know, that's actually a, a good question too, because we, that was in our previous co uh, conversation too, as well about, you know, as a home inspector, yes, we have to stick to the facts, but sometimes you end up being a coach, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, sometimes the agents doesn't know anything about GFCIs or, you know, they don't teach that in your schools. Well, they, we're or, legally or, not allowed to talk about it either. Right. Like if we're in a one story house, it's raining. I know all the plumbing's downstairs. And 
we've got water coming through the ceiling legally, I'm not able to say, Hey, the roof's leaking. Even if I go up in the attic and look at it and go, Oh, there's <laughs> water coming from the roof. Like I can't tell you that. Yes, that's a, that's a roof leak. I just have to be, it appears to be water. Cause I don't know if it's water or not. It might be feces <laughs> coming. I don't know. Right. Um, but that's how our rules are written. So we're, we're really locked down, you know, growing up in construction, I could look at things and be like, not a big deal, but I legally can't say that as a real estate agent. So there's the other, you know, side of it too. It makes it difficult. Yeah, that, that, that's really funny. Whenever uh, this story came into my head, whenever you said, you know, get to know your agent. And this is a, a you could probably relate to this a little bit. But one time I was, um, I did one of my inspectors, they did a home inspection and they recommended that the galvanized plumbing should be replaced. You know, pretty much all galvanized plumbing in yes. the Houston area needs to go. And she was younger and didn't know anything about plumbing. And she was like, she's like, I had someone do a walk and talk, which is not allowed in the Houston area. But I was like, well, just a, I informed mm -hmm. her about that. But I was like, go ahead. She's like, the inspector told me there's no problems with the galvanized plumbing. I was like, yes, that you can visibly see. But, you know, since it's galvanized plumbing, it's mm -hmm. 50 years old. It's at the end of its life. And we just educate the buyer. They don't doesn't mean they can negotiate on it. We just inform them that they need to replace the galvanized water lines here in the near future. And she's like, so you're saying all the galvanized plumbing in the Houston area is bad. I was like, yes. And then she's like, do you know how bad that would be? I was like, yeah, I know it's pretty bad. <laughs> you know, that was like how the conversation went. And I was like, I didn't laugh mm -hmm. at her, you know, but yeah. uh, but the but the conversation's funny because you're right, you know, some agents just I, don't, I feel don't like that know. might have been one of my inspections because um, I know <laughs> had the same scenario. Your guy said galvanized piping, replace it completely. Um, they had a contractor out there that said, no, I wouldn't replace it. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. Me as the agent goes, well, what do you want to do? You've got two opinions. Whatever direction you want to go is the mm -hmm. direction we'll go. Um, it might have busted out the deal, you know, but that was their call. It wasn't my call. It's their house. So that's another thing that, you know, really inspectors should train um the agents on if they don't know it's not your house like you could try to talk them into it all day but they're not the ones that are going to live there right like if i try to talk somebody into don't worry about the electrical work it's fine just move on like don't even ask for repairs that's silly because i'm not the one living there i'm not the one gonna go rerun rerun the wires or put in tamper resistant you know outlets for so my kid doesn't stick a fork in there um so what's best for that client? Let really, the client to see, yeah, choose. Let yeah. them choose. It's that, their decision, their house. That actually leads down in, I'm going to skip down to the one of the bottom questions here. So we're going to get into more of the, the other questions here. But the question is, is what do you think about inspectors talking about negotiations? Honestly, they stay out of it. It's none of, the, it's none of their business, um, period, because they don't know, they don't know how everything's working. Um, even if they ask the question of, is this the only subdivision you're looking in? You know, it, that really doesn't matter to the inspector, at least that question, but it does to the agent. The agent knows, you know, we went and showed them a hundred houses, 50 houses, maybe it was only three. I don't know. Um, but we show them the houses, we know what they're looking for, and we might know this is the only property that works for them. And then it leans back to, okay, what are y'all comfortable with? It's not what I feels okay or what you feels okay. Um, so the inspector to say, oh, you should go negotiate like this. The inspector doesn't negotiate ever on the transactions. It's the agents, a good qualified agent that knows what they're doing, knows how to negotiate. They know, okay, these people have been, you know, buttheads from the very beginning. Um, so we're not going to get much done. So it's up to you. If we get $500, are you okay? Yes or no. If it's a no, let's go find another house. I do like, so there's two things you said there. The last one was like, hey, it doesn't match it. You know, one of the biggest things that's always stuck to me is lose the house, don't mm -hmm. lose the client. You know, mm -hmm. lose the deal, don't lose the client. Stick with the client, make sure they get what they want, mm -hmm. right? And the other thing was is like they, sh you know, the inspector should stay out of it. And this was actually in our most recent team meeting about um, what you should be talking about negotiations. Do not right. bring up, you know, bring up negotiations uh, because you don't. We don't know what it took to get there. How right. much money did you ask off for the house? You know, uh, that that's the biggest thing. So what if you already took 25 grand off the house and then right. you're over here talking about negotiating like $3,000 or mm -hmm. $5,000 to replace an AC unit or something. Maybe they it. sold it what they did because that's just 
there as is, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of pieces of negotiations that people don't realize, even when they go throughout the process. I mean, in a real estate transaction, we have four or five times we can be negotiating from the very beginning to the very end after you sign paperwork. Um, so there's a lot of pieces and we're, you know, if we're, why would we go fight over something that's a hundred dollars when I'm telling you that your lender is not very good at their job. And there's a good case that we might have to extend the close date and we need that other negotiation period because they could take your earnest money and run that earnest money is going to be 1% of the house typically. So that hundred dollars might've cost you $4,000 in the grand scheme of things. Right. So what we've trained our home inspectors on just recently, you know, I was reading this book, it's called verbal judo. Mm -hmm. And one of the lines that spoke to me was people like to be given choices. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest questions that's always asked for us, should I negotiate on this or, you know, right. what, what should I do? And so what I told them is you need to give them a choice, you mm -hmm. know? So the choice is you, you can either, you know, you need to talk to your agent. Uh, you can either negotiate on it. You can budget to replace it mm -hmm. or you move on to another house, you know, what are like, you comfortable with, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, you right. know, like, so, you know, obviously discuss these options with, but you don't tell them mm -hmm. what to do. Don't tell them, Hey, just go negotiate on it. No, give them options. Well, I mean, and, shift it to a roof. Roof is 20 years old. It's got 10 ish years left on it. You know, it might have 15. It might only have two. We don't know, you know, mm -hmm. um, it might probably need a little bit of roof maintenance. I tell all my clients, sellers and buyers, hey, it probably needs five hundred, a thousand dollars worth of worth of roof repairs every single time, almost every transaction. Um, so when they come in and they go, okay, well, the inspector said that we need to go ahead and get money for the roof. So a roof right now is ten thousand dollars. It's got ten years left. That means twenty years are gone. We need to, you know, get six thousand dollars, seven thousand dollars for this roof. Well, you already knew what the age was, like. That was not a question in the very beginning. And that, like, that, that was the choice of the words of the inspector, right? Every yeah. house has a roof. Every house has an HVAC. It's it's a question of, is it holding up right now? If it's holding up right now, then honestly, you got to move on. You already knew the ages. And that, that just like a lot of, I think whenever, I, especially whenever I was a newer home inspector, I didn't realize the power of my words. Mm -hmm. So every word, people are dissecting Matters. exactly what you say. Mm -hmm. And so if you say this is an old roof, that like can send them down a rabbit hole mm -hmm. instead of just like talking about the problems with the roof and then giving them choices of right. how to tackle this option and then them bringing the choices to you and then y'all can talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was like the biggest thing. So, you know, before I was like, oh yeah, just tell them you, you should negotiate on this or whatever. That was in my mindset. And then I, whenever I, I was like, no, they should be given choices. Right. Like the choices are, um, the most important part because then they 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 like the action of being like well i made the decision mm -hmm. to fix the roof or not fix well, the roof you know let, let's look at the roof situation and kind of break that down so we're let's say it's a 10-year roof right should have 20 years left of life right but and in fact agent everybody knew the roof is only 10 years old so inspector gets up there and looks at it and says oh so this roof's really clean it's been pressure washed many, many times because the seller thought that was the right thing. I actually had a seller like this last year. Um, roof is only like 12 years old, I think, but they pressure washed it oh, all the every single gone. year. So that 10 year roof looked like it was a 50 year roof. Like it was just, <laughs> it's, it looked like it had been there forever, even though it looked nice and pretty. Right. Um, and that's a good example. That's when a buyer walks in and, you know, we look at it and say, you got 20 years left on there. Um, but then inspection comes back and we go, Ooh, yeah, it's supposed to have 20 years left, but they ruined this roof. So this is something now we need to negotiate because that's when we're going to actually say, OK, we need some money for this roof where a normal 10 year old roof. We're not going to do anything with you. Knew it was 10 years old. Right. You know, maybe maybe that five hundred thousand dollars of maintenance stuff that needs to be done, you know, lifting shingles, things like that. Um, but overall, we're not trying to adjust because of the age. All right. Nice. So I think we beat up the negotiation stuff a little bit. So I'm going to get into a little bit different question yeah. here. And um, so I know you, that you pretty much refer us out all the time, but I know you need three uh, people. Yeah, <laughs> three people. Yeah, but you need you need three two other inspectors mm -hmm. to meet like the, the the give the client choices. So 
what makes you choose an inspector? So what do you look for whenever you are out there and you're trying to choose an right. inspector? What, what do you, what are the qualities that you look for? What are the services you look for? You know, the price range, would you think price even matters? You know, so uh, what, what do you think makes you choose an inspector? Well, later we'll talk about how I choose not to ever hire an inspector. Um, in fact, heck, let's hit it now. Okay. Um, it's it's going to be a little off top topic ish. Mm -hmm. So I, I can tell you, if you're an inspector watching this, take notes, like mental note. No, go physically write it down. Um, one of the things that really makes me mad with inspectors is I'm holding an open house. I just did this, what, a week ago, two weeks ago. Um, and I'm holding this open house. And I had at one point five people in this open house looking at it. I'm trying to get it under contract. I'm trying to sell this house, maybe pick up another client, secondary goal. Um and I had two inspectors come visit me that day. The first one was very respectable. And he kind of came in and he said, hey, I see you have somebody here. Do you need to talk to him? I said, no, I already did. It's good. What's up? So we chatted about his business, what he does, what he offers agents. Great. Thanks, dude. And he saw somebody else coming in. He leaves. Then I had um, another guy come in when I had five people in the house. And it was more important for him to tell me about his business than let me actually do my job. Don't ever do that. Just don't do it. Can Draw I stop, me up the wall. Can go, I stop you one go. second? Yeah. So I, I actually, <laughs> I do, you know, coach inspectors or through this podcast about, you know, open houses. And one of the things I'm very clear on a lot of the times is you're working, you know, working. you know, just like you're working there, you just dropping off even a bottle of water and your card gives the same impression about giving the speech of everything you do, mm -hmm. you know, and they don't know how long you've been doing the business. Like I understand what inspectors do, you mm -hmm. know, just being yeah. like, Hey, here's the water, you know, thanks. You know, it's more about getting the card from you and then following up later. You got to remember Clayton's working, you know, <laughs> like he's working. Yeah. But go ahead. No, so, that, I mean, you're very right to be mad about that. I mean, the, yeah. the right way to do it is show up and say, Hey, I'm a home inspector. You got people here. I'm just going to wander around. In fact, I would appreciate it as a listing agent if you just wandered around, just visually looked at the house, and then once nobody was there, because open houses are weird. I had 12 groups through in two hours, but about a whole hour, if you combine it all, I was by myself. So that that second inspector could have just hung out for a little bit, waited 20 minutes, and then all of a sudden he would have had me to himself for like 30 minutes. Yeah. And he could have walked around the house and they came and said, hey, look, um, I don't know if you noticed this, but I found this one issue. You might want to get it fixed now. Hey, bonus points. You just told me something that might need might show up in our inspection report. Maybe it's something we need to knock out now because the house has been on the market for Save a while. Save some money. Yeah. You know, hey, go do this now. That way it doesn't pop up. That would that would be a bonus, right? I'd say 50-50 on that one. You know, you would take it good, but you know, some other people would be like, hey, get out of here. You know, <laughs> you know. But, it, it depends yeah. on how you present it too. Oh, that right. Is, if you're yeah. like, oh, oh, this house is horrible. Like, right. you need a lot of things to do. Don't do that. Just mm -hmm. Hey, here's one big pressing thing I saw that's cheap to do just in case you want to tell them it's all verbal. So just, you know, if they don't like it, they don't like it. They walk out of the house um, because I know, you know, going to your question of how do I hire inspectors? I'm different than other people. Um, there's a lot of people. I, I know these agents and I think we might talk about this later if we still have it on the agenda, um, but they'll hire inspectors based off of what they find. I hired this inspector because they never find anything. They need glasses. <laughs> I don't agree with that personally. <laughs> I, I think I think that's wrong. I think ethically that's wrong. You know, can you put it in a paper and say it's unethical? I don't know. Um, but I don't like that. I'd rather hire somebody that could find everything that's wrong, be able to go above and beyond, take care of my client, you know, like you, fully you know, informed. We, that's we, what we I talked about say. earlier. We never we never get to hang out. We never go have beers together, which is why I brought beers, right? Yeah. We're actually having <laughs> beers this year. Yeah. No matter what. Um so, you know, I don't hire you because I like you as a person, which I do. I love you. Your wife's even better. Just saying. <laughs> um, but I hire you. I, I tell my clients that y'all are an amazing company because y'all do your job. You do your job for the client very, very well. A good aspect on that is the tools that you use. And any inspector that talks to me, I'll talk to anybody. You never know. You might close doors tomorrow and retire. I, you know, I don't know. So I'm always shopping. I'll, I'll never not shop. Um and I ask him things like, okay, do you do termite inspections? Oh, no, I have another guy. All right, well, I don't really like another guy because one guy coming in is a lot better than having multiple. Do you do pools? Oh, no, I got a guy. Okay, now I've got three people in the house that I've got to coordinate with and pay. Three different payments. Yeah. My, my buyers have to pay, right? Now we're up in the cost even more. 
Um, do you do septic? Oh no, but I got a guy. Now we got four guys. Um, so that starts adding up quite a bit, right? So I want somebody that could come in, do all of it. You got a three story house, you know, you got a townhouse. They pull out a drone, pull out a drone. Hey, we can't climb up there, but let's get the drone with 4k footage and say, here's our issues. Brand new house. One whole side needs to be redone. So what tools do you have? And then one of my other things is how long is it going to take in a market like today where we have 1.1 months of inventory? Am I going to have to wait two days? Does your wife have to type it up for you? because You don't know how to use a computer. Like I need that ASAP. Y'all get it to me typically as soon as you walk out of the house, unless there's signal issues or batteries died, things happen. Um, but I think worst case scenario, y'all did an inspection and left at like 6 p.m. And I got it at like 3 a.m. I think it was a worst case scenario. 3 a.m.? What was that guy doing? Should, doing his job. <laughs> you, should tell, you should tell me about that. <laughs> doing his job. That was a long time ago. Uh, but I mean, worst case scenario, right? Yeah, That's the not computer bad. must have went down or something. I think yeah. I think it was a cell phone issue. You know, pocket Wi-Fi's yeah. just weren't working. I mean, Cold Springs, Polk County. Good luck. Okay. It was out in the, out <laughs> it in was the, out the bonies. Oh, okay. Fair um, enough. Fair enough. So, you know, sit, I, I want that inspection report quick because I'm moving quick. I know in Houston, it is average to have 10 days of inspection period. I like to put seven. There's no reason to drag it out. Get in, We get under contract today, get inspection tomorrow. Um, and then we get that report the same day. I'm already negotiating that night. In fact, because y'all actually go over the report with the buyers, as y'all are walking out of the house, closing up shop, I'm already talking to the buyers. What's your big concern? You talk to the inspector. What do you want negotiated? I've got my list of items. As I drive back to the office, it ends up in my inbox. I rub, write up the amendment. So within an hour of y'all leaving the house, I'm typically sending an amendment for repairs. Nice, nice. That, so we're moving quicker, saving the buyer money in the long run. So just a, a quick, quick recap. So you have, it's it's about communication. So, you know, are they, great. Are, are they communicating well? You know, the tools that they have. Are a must. Yeah. How fast are they getting you the report? Timely. And, um, going over the report with the client that kind of stuck out to me too. And then a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A majority one-stop shop. There's some things that we, you know, other we can't do as an inspector, but like, right. can we accomplish a majority of the basic tasks that are on most of the homes in right. your location? Right. You know, septics, pools, termites, mm -hmm. which are sprinkler systems, you know, right. all of that, all of that is there, you know, so you, to have a really solid product, you, you need, <clears throat> sorry, all those problems. You you need yeah. to, you need to solve a lot of that because it's a one stop shop, like you said. You know, yeah. and as a good with a good buyer's agent, an agent that's taking care of the buyers. You know, I, I have a lot of cases where y'all are out inspecting a house, and I know the HVAC's bad, so I've already gotten the buyer to hire an HVAC company to come look at it deeper and actually give us quotes right then and there. Um, roof, hey, we know this thing's jacked up. Let's get a let's get a quote right off the bat while y'all are inspecting. Your inspectors team up with those guys that are inspecting, you know, the, those roofers and say, hey, did you catch this? Did you catch that? Did you get and you? So you make your report even stronger, even though you usually find everything. <laughs> um, but it makes sure that the roofer or the HVAC guy found everything. And now we've already got, you know, how much is going to cost. Now we can negotiate. Nice. So. That, that's a lot of stuff. So you got to see there's a lot of moving parts to being a successful home inspector that will work with a uh, a top producing agent. You know, mm -hmm. you have a lot of expectations, but I don't think they're unreasonable expectations by any means. You just want to make sure whoever you, your clients are hiring are going to perform for them best. Yeah, go for it, man. Well, I mean, <laughs> there, are, there are high expectations if you're lazy. You know, <laughs> like... You're self-employed, like get to work. <laughs> get to work. You should be working. Yeah. So the the next question I have for you is, um, so I wrote, what do you expect out of a home inspection? And I think you kind of hit that. And mm -hmm. one of the things that you said that kind of struck to me the most was like, I don't hire an inspector because the reports are light. I hire the inspector because everything is in the report mm -hmm. all the way down to like the, the minor grading issues all the way to the big hole in the roof. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the client should just be fully informed on what they're purchasing. Right. And I, I think you kind of hit that. Is there anything else you wanted to hit on that well, I mean, point right there? You know, and one way you should start off your inspection class when you're teaching real estate agents is, Hey, if you do your job properly, you're going to have to sell that house eventually. So you want everything found because you want it found now instead of in the future. 
let those buyers start doing those repairs, especially, you know, I always bring up window caulking because it always makes me laugh. <laughs> it's I've on had, every report. I've had, I've had people throw a fit. No, it has to be done or else I'm not buying the house. And it's like, man, I could hire a handyman for a hundred bucks to do it all. Do you hire the handyman? Yeah. Just, <laughs> I don't, but, um, you know, so I mean, it, it's pretty, I, I feel like it's simple at least. Yeah. I don't know. I think the expectation is great, you know, uh, because we wouldn't change, you know, because you know, I always like to say it's a double edged sword. You know, sometimes these there's an agent she'll call me and I think you actually know one of them. <laughs> they, they call me and they'll be like, well, he called this out and he called this out. You know, that's not normal for home inspections. I was like uh, and I explained to him, I was just like, listen, you know, when we talked about agents that hire people that don't find much. Yeah, that might explain a little bit more of that story. <laughs> yeah, there was it may or may or not have been in or around someone that we may or may not know. Well, and that <laughs> and that agent threw a big fit because of the things that y'all found. And, mm -hmm. you know, that set of buyers ran in a lot of bad luck. And the there's a couple of houses. Well, I mean, the first house they had to walk away from because of issues on their sell side because they were selling it themselves. Um, so they hired y'all for that one. They were very pleased. They went to the second one. Um, the second one, nobody blamed them for walking. In fact, the only reason they walked and didn't ask for repairs because there was so much and they're just such amazing people that they didn't want to ask the sellers to do all these different repairs as, as simple as it is. Um, they would have still bought the house if they did a ton of repairs, but we're looking in that house, it was like 40,000 worth of work. I think it was like two HVAC systems and two HVAC things. systems. Foundation was very questionable. Um, the roof was questionable. Like all your big ticket items were questionable. Right. So, but what I like to say is like, it's a double edged sword. It is you're like, yeah, you're mad at me for finding all these items, but say I lightened it up a little bit and the client bought the home. Mm -hmm. Who's going to come after me? Right. That, that sword's going to hit me from both directions. So I was like, I'd much rather take your edge of the sword than the client's. But let, let's, <laughs> look, let's look at, you know, Houston as a whole. You know, I don't know if these guys are in Houston or not. Maybe they're all over the world. Um, but you've got 40, 44, 43,000 agents in Houston. Did it go up to 44? I thought last, it was like 36,000. Last I saw it had four. I mean, it might have tanked because of things happening. Um, I, I think it just keeps climbing. There was, there was, I know when I came into Houston, there was like 30 ish thousand. So even if it's at 36 now, that's a massive climb in six years. Um, but there's a ton of agents. Find who meshes with you. I mean, it's mm -hmm. as simple as that. You're not going to win them all. You're yeah. not going to win them all. And who, who are going to be the ones that, that are doing their job properly that you want to align with. Do you want to align with that shady person over here? Or do you want to align with the one that's doing their job properly? Yeah. Because you do the right thing, you know, and, and you mentioned, you know, before about agents being mad about the inspections and ruining the deal. Dude, ruin the deal. As long as you explain it properly, I'm good. I mean, in cases where y'all been like, oh, this has a lot of work. I'm sitting back going, guys, I told you we shouldn't put a contract on this house. Like, let's go get something else. It's fine. Like there's, there's too much here in your situation. Um, align yourself with those good agents that are doing the right things. You do the right things that have inspector, the money will come. Don't look at the money. Don't look at dollar signs. As soon as you start doing that, you start tanking, you start getting greedy, you start making the wrong decisions. Look at the people, take care of the transactions and, and the money will be there. I completely agree. All right. So one of my final questions here coming close to the end of the podcast is, this is a funny one. What do you think about re-inspections? I love them. Oh, really? I they're, do. They're no, nothing's ever done. <sighs> ish. Ish. Um, you know, I, I think they're great because let me give you a good scenario. I was on the listing side. Um, I listed the property. We actually, before we even listed the property, we had HVAC checked out. We had the hot water heater checked out. These sellers went above and beyond making sure things were done properly. In fact, we got the roof, a, a new roof put on. And um, inspection happened. Come to find out, buyer's agent showed the property, but never actually went. Her clients from out of town never even saw the house. And so she scheduled an appointment, but never went in the house. I had tracking and knew she never did. Um, but they asked for X, Y, and Z repairs. Done. We did those repairs. Not a big deal. So we close on the property and they never did a reinspect. Um, in fact, it was funny because the buyer's agent walked up to me in front of the title company and handed me a gift. And I'm like, oh, weird. Never had a buyer's agent do that. She thought I was the buyer. 
<laughs> she know? had no idea. Didn't even, hey, who are you? She like, never met you? Just, I never guess, saw my, never saw my picture in the email and just kind of said, oh, okay, you must be the person because I recognize your face. Um, so, I, and I felt terrible for these buyers because we, I ended up having to go take the keys to the buyers because she was too lazy to do so. Come to find out they were sitting in front of the house for three hours. They never even did a final walkthrough. They never walked the property ever before they closed, even though they were in front of the property. Um, so I get a call about seven days later. HVAC never HVAC downstairs wasn't working. What do you mean it wasn't working? No, no, it, it wasn't working. And we want you to uh, pay this bill for a whole new HVAC system. So as a listing agent, I looked at it and said, OK, where's the report saying it wasn't working? We don't have that. Here's the bill. OK, cool. Um, did you do a final inspection? No, well, I know you didn't. Um, did you do a final walkthrough to make sure everything was working? No, I didn't do that either because we didn't have time because you rushed closing. Number one, y'all rushed closing. Y'all closed early. We were willing to close whenever. Um, you were too lazy to do your job. And the poor buyers, the ones that got hit with it. So they put a new HVAC system, which I honestly, to this day, don't think it had to be replaced. And I'm pretty sure I'm almost 99.9% .9 sure it was working the day of closing. Cause I was there the day before. Um, but if they would have done a reinspection or at least a walkthrough, they would have said, Hey, HVAC isn't working. Great. We would have fixed it in a heartbeat, but you can't do it after the fact. Mm. So a reinspection would have really helped them. In fact, they called me about six months after closing and said, Hey, this brand new roof has seven leaks. Got them with a the roofer. There's a warranty. They fixed it, but that was something that would have been found in a reinspection. Right. Yes. You know, reinspections are just funny, but you know, one of the things too, you probably catch us doing this all the time because we're a multi firm mm -hmm. and there'll be like a, I'm actually doing it on Friday, but something happens. They want, they're like, no, this isn't a fine and this is a fine and y'all are in a dispute. And then what do you think, like whenever this dispute happens over one of my findings mm -hmm. and then an inspector charges you to go back out? Do you think the inspector should charge or you think if it's a 15 minute fine, should you just go out there? For and a reinspection? It just like a one item, like say there's a water leak, there's one item, both of y'all are, you know, there's a few uh, tension between the sellers and buyers. I could go out there with my infrared camera and be like, it's right there and then leave. Do you think a home inspector should charge for that trip? I think it's going to depend on a couple of things. Um, you know how I feel. I, and I've, I've chewed this guy out because he didn't charge before. So don't let him lie to you. <laughs> um, I, and I chewed you out for it. I yeah. said, what are you doing? You're running a business right. charge. Like you had every right to charge for this, for this trip. It's like a reinspection of it, like it, a roof stuff or something. Yeah. And it, it was something simple. I get it, you know, and, and pick and choose when the right times and wrong times are to do that. Um, the right time, you know, not to charge. Maybe you're right around the corner doing inspection. You're like, hey, I'll swing by real quick. Not a big deal. You're billing rapport with that agent. Maybe you want to capture. Um, but what if it's Billy Bob Joe you've never heard of in your life? The buyers found you from your social media and your awesome videos that you put online. Um, you know, are, who are you going to take care of? That agent? Or are you going to take care of the buyer? Charge the buyer. Take care of yourself. You're running a business. Right. Do the right things. I mean, again, remember, you're running a business. Charge that fee. You deserve that fee. Yeah. You can't do an inspection because of that. Yeah. You, you, I can't pay the bills. But again, <laughs> I'm, I'm different than most. So, you know, fill out your agents. Fill out what they need, what they want. I think situation does dictate, like, you and I have a relationship. But like, you're right. If I didn't have a relationship with this person you know, I think it's perfectly acceptable to mm -hmm. charge, but you know, you probably send us what 20 deals a year or something like that. I'm trying for more. Yeah. <laughs> and so with us just, I'd be like, yeah, man, I'll, I'll knock it out and I'll swing out there and I'll, I'll, but it's not, it's normally me. So one of my inspectors, uh, did, did the uh, inspection, you know, one of my inspectors did the inspection and then I'll go out there behind them. And so, and that's kind of what we do for re how we treat reinspections. Yeah. I, I say, I say you charge every single time if the agent gets mad at you again, they don't like to discount their commission. So why would you dis discount yours? No, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. We, I mean, yeah, we have it's to a business. Be yeah. run your business accordingly. I can agree with that. I'm a, I am a sucker and I actually don't charge a lot of the times when I should, to, should, you know, I talk myself out a lot of stuff. Sometimes I'll show up and mm -hmm. the stucco looks perfectly fine and they want me to do an intrusive test on it. It's like one year old. And I'm like, I'll do this one spot right here. And, you know, I'll charge mm -hmm. you half price. And then, and then he's like, no, no, do the whole thing. And I was like, okay. Yeah, but I, but like sometimes I'll talk to him like, man, you don't need the whole thing. You just need an 
this location, uh-huh. but you're right. You just, I mean, what, what is it worth? I mean, if you're doing the house next door, then yeah, you can maybe run over there for free and, you know, make friends with the buyers because they're going to be your neighbor. But yeah. again, yeah, exactly. you're like running a, a business. Yep. You've got to run it as a business. And when you run it as a business, people respect you more. I when agree. you say, no, I don't work Sundays. I'm not going to just, you know, leap for you. People are going to respect you more. And if they don't use you because of it, so be it. Go find somebody else. Oh, you know, let's say 36,000 agents in Houston. Like there's plenty of business there. Look yeah. how many transactions there's, are happening. There's 6 million people in Houston. You know, maybe you don't <laughs> market to real estate agents anymore. Maybe you just market to the buyers. Yep. Do your videos, do your social media posts, just rock and roll with it. Nice. All right. So that's all my questions. So I, before we end it, I do you have anything, one more thing you would want to say to home inspectors out there. I, th- I think I, my biggest thing was don't bother them in open houses. Like <laughs> when it's empty, we're bored. We're doing TikToks, at least some of us. Um, you jump in the TikTok <laughs> with them, you know, whatever. Um, but don't bug them when they're working. Like yeah, it's just you got buyers in there, you know. Yeah, that's one of the biggest things. I was like, it's always been a huge no no to me. Is like if you walk in, there's people in there, just walk out. You're, you know, like it, it might even not even be. They have their cards on the counter most of the time. Mm-hmm. Take the card and leave. Be like, and then you can even write them a letter. Be like, hey, sorry I missed you. I stopped in. You know, good job on your open house. Mm-hmm. And then if you got a letter like that, people would be like. Oh man, that's, that's awesome. The power mm-hmm. of the handwritten note. I've always talked about that. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, and I'll tell you no labels winning this Ridgeback. I like this way better. The the Ridgeback wins. The Ridgeback wins. All right. That, me, that's least. next. You haven't tried it. No, I'll open it right after this. Uh, but, but no, yeah. I mean, honestly, be you, do you, um, if the agent doesn't like it, whatever, there's plenty of them out there. hundred dollar discounts for the next inspection does nothing for me. I'm not going to use you because of it. Provide oh, service, take care of the buyer. Because that's I, what's going to be the I best. I love the fact that you said that. The $100 discounts or the $25 discounts. I be, Whenever I first got in the field, I was like, oh, $25 discounts. I'm going to tell all the agents how to do this. They don't care about discounts. Mm-hmm. Nobody cares about discounts. If anything, you're discounting your service. Your service. You're like, so what are you going to do? Inspect 20, 10% less? You know, <laughs> I mean, like. Say the same to agents when you're teaching those classes. Hey, are you going to discount your services because you live across the street from me? No, you're not. Mm-hmm. You're in charge of the same. Yeah, we yeah, don't don't like discredit your service, don't offer uh discounts, Be don't charge too too cheap, you know, charge for what you're worth. You know, mm-hmm. and that, what I like to yeah. say is like you said, how we include we have all these tools. Well, if you don't have all these tools, it's okay to charge less. But if you have all these tools, you have the infrared camera, the drones, mm-hmm. the zip levels, you know, charge what you're worth. <laughs> you know, I mean that's yeah. that's I mean the kind of marketing I do is above and beyond. I'm gonna charge what I charge. Yeah. I'm not gonna discount because I'm doing things way higher than anybody else, just like y'all are. Right. You got a yeah. drone, can't climb on the roof. It's not hey, see a see roofing specialist because I can't get on the roof. You're like, hey, here's a drone. Here's we the give, things I found. Yeah, we give them solutions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, sweet. So that's uh thanks for listening to the home inspection whisperer show. And uh Clayton, how do they find you? How do they find you on social media? Oh, I'm easy. Find me on Cooking Realtor, especially when you see some delicious food. If you like to craft, I kind of do a little bit of that too. That is true. Cooking Realtor. I mean, I'm super easy to find. Clayton Estrems, Clayton Fernando Estrems. Um, show up quicker that direction. Nice. All right. So give them a follow. You have a YouTube channel too, don't you? I do. It's Cooking Realtor. Simple. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> oh, Questions right. and answers show, a little cooking, a little crafting, some pretty awesome listing videos. Nice. Yeah, so uh, give him a follow on uh, YouTube, subscribe to his channel, and uh, catch us on the next one. Thanks, everyone. Bye.